my relationship is just based on my determination that no duckling shall die. When you make a bond with a wild animal, it's really quite a special thing. It's different from having a cat or a dog. You have a wild duck who is wary of you and you overcome their wariness. So they become friends and they learn to recognize you, they learn to come to you, and then they leave you. And you don't know if they're gonna come back again. This one has, honey's up there. She's at least five. This is her fourth year. They don't breed till the end of their first year. Her friend, BFF Dorothy, is on the other side of the building. Jerry's a professor emeritus. He, his office is near the pond, and every year uh, he and I engage, uh, along with my team, about the ducks and the arriving ducklings. You know, they locked the campus down. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get on campus and feed the ducks. But I wrote to President Zemmerer and the provost, Lee, and told them, you know, this is a really trivial request. I don't want to bother you, but... Um, there are these ducks. <laughs> They've been here since the turn of the 20th century, and I've taken care of them. They keep coming back. And could you give me permission to, to come here and feed them? The next morning when I got up, a couple hours later, I got an email from the president, Zimmer. I mean, I was shocked <laughs> you know, that he didn't even respond. But it was really nice. He said, yes, please take care of our ducks. That you know, They're like, they belong to the university, and we're really appreciative of you taking care of them. Here are the dangers are mainly raccoons and feral cats. But I mean, they're completely free of those predators because of where they nest. The obstacle is that they have to jump. <laughs> the nest is just above the door, about three floors up and right above concrete. And there was no way to avoid the ducklings coming directly down on concrete. So we built a little landing pad. Some people are calling it a trampoline, but uh, that and some mulch so that when the ducklings were ready to jump, they had a place to land that wasn't uh, concrete. In the end, we didn't lose a duckling. So that's that was my mission and we succeeded in that. She jumped at 6.15 and the ducklings were down within a matter of minutes and then we just walked her to the pond. So that was okay, but the minute she got into the pond, she got into this tremendous altercation with the other hand, Dorothy, and the babies all mixed up in a big pile. Finally, I got the mother separated with my super soaker squirt gun but the babies didn't know which mother to go to, so they got all mixed up. So what we do is we have two mothers with a brood that they don't even know is theirs. You know, watching the fights between the two females, the two hens, and between the hens and the predatory drakes that come in to try to mate with them, that's been really quite stressful. And I'm hoping that things are gonna calm down now. I'm completely drained. I haven't eaten that combined with all the stress. I haven't slept at all. So I'm just a wreck, but I'm, you know, it, it went off, so. There are a tremendous amount of people involved in this project. Not a lot of time necessarily, but just different people playing different parts. So we were very excited when they finally all arrived. There's an old Jewish saying that when you save one life, it's as if you saved the world. So when you save a duck, it's as if you, I mean, you've saved the world for that duck.